Hello, and welcome back to Farzins Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on with Suzerain. So, last time out, we uh, allocated our government budget for this term, as well as had a not super pleasant walk with our wife. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pick it up here. It looks like we've got a couple of reports. Yeah, it looks like just the two, and a handful of newspapers. So, let's go ahead and start off uh, in Lockhaven here. Alright, Young Swords members arrested and face terrorism charges. Six terrorists from Young Swords plotting to bomb a rally were caught by Lockhaven police. The perpetrators confessed to their plans and said they did it in response to the ban on Young Swords. They have each been convicted and sentenced to 154 years in prison for planning a terrorist attack on the people of Swordland and for treason against Swordland. Hmm. 154 years sounds like a pretty long time. Considering they didn't technically do anything. But whatever, I don't care. And from Deer BFF Bombs Police Station. In a treacherous attack, the BFF has bombed a police station Deer. Initial casualties reported three officers dead and 22 injured. The perpetrators have escaped into the Goomerin Mountains near Uzrin, and a search has started to bring them to justice. The border guard has been notified of the attackers in case they try to flee to Valen. The Workers' Party of Bludia condemned the incident. I mean, I would hope you condemn that, even if you, like, privately support it. Which, I mean, you shouldn't, but... You want to try to uh, maintain any legitimacy. All right. Anyway, let's go to the newspapers. We got uh, two of them here from the Lock Haven Times. So we got explosion deer, three killed, twenty-two wounded. So it's literally what we just read about. Bomb attack on a police station deer has killed three officers, and injured twenty-two others. Officials say no group has claimed responsibility for the attack. The police of deer said militants from the British Freedom Front or BFF were likely behind the attack and reported that several militants also fired at the officers as they tried to escape the fires of the explosion in the treacherously pre-planned ambush. There has been a wave of unrest in Sorland for the last couple of months. These attacks seem to suggest that the racial tensions in Berger have also increased to very dangerous levels, which raises questions about how the situation should be handled. The Workers' Party of Bludius condemned the incident, adding that the BFF does not reflect the views or the culture of the Buddhist people. Arkazi has called on both sides to avoid violence, but stressed that Sorland has the right to defend itself against attacks by Bludish rebels. And detonation. Sorland in a tough spot. Current public reports from the Ministry of Economy are pointing to a deep underlying problem with Sorland's economical standing. Debt. It appears that the current ventures to get out of recession have put a considerable dent in the reserves. Although the comments from the administration state that the situation is only temporary, that remains to be seen. Our economic advisors commented on the matter, saying that the current stance of the administration is hiding the extent of the debt. This, of course, brings up the question, is Sorland turning into a debt nation? I guess it's a fair question. Alright, and we got two more here from Geopolitico. There we go. Smolak condemns Arkazian soldiers in Lesbia. Rockland Vitsuelin. Lazic President Victor Smolak on Thursday criticized the Lesbian government for bringing Arkazian soldiers close to the borders of Valen. Last month, Prime Minister Alvarez and President Walker agreed on the construction of several military bases in Lesbia that would station ATO soldiers. With the arrival of the first Arkazian soldiers to Lesbia this week, Valen's stance has become increasingly hostile. In a speech on Thursday, Smolak said President Walker succeeded in spreading Arkazian imperialism to eastern Maricopa, which will have consequences for every one of us in the region. ATO is clearly expanding its influence in our region using Lesbia. We must be careful, said President Smolak, warning the neighboring nations of Magnolia and Sorland to be prepared for future crises. Cool. And Chancellor Hegel condemns military buildup in Lesbia. In the press conference on Wednesday, Chancellor Hegel of Balkson condemned Arkazi for building a military base on Ravnos Island. In his statement, Arkazi's action on the Ravnos Island is a provocative move that is undermining the peace and stability in the region. It is also threatening Volksen's national security. However, Volksen is not a country to be bullied so easily. We and the entire CSP coalition will for uh, correspond in force if Arkazi does not withdraw from the island. Cool, some nice little military bluster there. Alright, that looks to be everything, so I guess let's uh, head back to Hullsword here. Alright, for one more report. Um... General Staff Condemns the Administration The General Staff convened at Camp Strongarm, a session much longer than usual concluded with a disastrous military analysis of Sordland's field capabilities. The Chief of the Armed Forces, Falcon Kruger, made a public press statement condemning the administration its efforts to weaken the most important branch of the government and the military. All staff generals co-signed a letter of condemnation to the Reign Administration. Cool beans, I don't really care. Alright. Well, let's get some actually important here. Uh, budget Allocation of Law Enforcement I was in my office reading reports from ministries about the current situation of the protests. 
My next scheduled meeting was about the law enforcement budget with Mia and Lily as I heard some knocks on the door. Mia entered and took a seat at my, uh, in front of my desk. Lilius was absent. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Lilius will be late. Apparently, there's an urgent matter at the Ministry of Interior she had to attend to. Shouldn't take long. Huh, very well. Let's wait. I returned to my reports. Mia smoothed back an errant strand of her hair. There was an awkward silence. <laughs> That's pretty much what I expected. Oh, um... Hmm, yeah, uh, well, while we wait, why don't we have a little chat? This might come off as a little strange, but I am proud of you. Despite everything, you are actually trying to reform the country. Uh, <laughs> let's go with that one. Ah, uh, flattery won't work on me. What do you want? For now, I just want to chat. She leaned forward. How are you really holding up ends on being the president? I mean... It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it's also the best thing I've ever done in my life. I can imagine so much responsibility and so much power at the same time. I want to assist you in the country as best I can, and to do that I have an idea. We need to eliminate the worst problem we have. Corruption. Jeez, about damn time it came to the point. What do you want? Uh, please, can I hold a normal conversation with the President? As a Minister of Justice, as you can guess, I have a passion for justice. It's high time all guards of the Supreme Court stop holding the country in the palm of their hands. And that's why I want to form a new unit, Anti-Corruption Police. That is my idea. So, what if the Anti-Corruption Police get corrupted? What then? I'm slipping out the details myself right now, but of course there would be safety mechanisms in place. Also, one more thing. About Lilius. I wouldn't trust her if I were... She barely finished the sentence before we heard a knock on the door. Mia almost jumped in her chair. Lilius Groff entered the room. I don't think she finished her sense at all, because it got cut off right in the middle. <laughs> Mr. President, Mia, I hope that I'm not interrupting your conversation. No, 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 we're just discussing a few things. Mia smiled at Lilius. I'm so lucky for being late. There was an important matter at the Ministry, just a small dispute over who should get surprised, nothing major. Lilius took a seat next to Mia as she continued talking. Well then, let's go straight in. We'll provide a brief update on the situation of law enforcement. I nodded. Nia? The Ministry of Justice the Supreme Court is working in close collaboration with the Ministry of the Interior to address the protests in the country. I must add that thanks to the hard work of our judiciary, the law enforcement forces assigned to my ministry are doing their jobs efficiently. I would call it the success of our forces on the ground, not due to the judicial branch of our government. Lilia shot Nia a brief, withering glance. As expected, the budget increase has boosted morale of employees and law enforcement agencies. In these dire times, my people and Mia's people are especially delighted. This came as a pleasant surprise to many in the Ministry of Interior, since it was not even one of our campaign promises. And for that, all I will say is bravo. This was an excellent decision. Agreed. The Ministry of Justice will be very happy with the decision as well. The backlog of the court cases is dwindling. We have started to fulfill the needs of the current situation. Certainly a step in the right direction. I just did what was expected, that's all. Of course. Well then, let's move on to what we're actually here for. Due to the budget increase, we can start doing much more as the main branches of security and sort them. However, a decision has to be made about the budget balance between the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Justice. Exactly. When deciding on such a bigger picture, I believe you make the right choice and pick the Ministry of Interior. Alright, old lady, why should I pick the Ministry of Interior? The Ministry of Interior is a much more significant and important government agency that is in need of the funds, especially during these times when there are many protests in the country. Huh, good luck prosecuting criminals going through local government laws without enough judges, Lilius. Alright, Nia, why should I pick your ministry? Each day, stacks of legal cases are piling up with judges. Cases for corruption and criminals are delayed due to a lack of funds. It seems to me that's an organizational issue, not a funding one. The interior needs money more for police and local governments. Alright, well, what if I just uh, try to balance the budget? Now, yeah, balancing the budget won't help as much. The current situation clearly demands a decisive choice to be made to benefit the nation. I agree, we need to focus on one ministry to achieve tangible results. But of course, what would make most sense in the current situation would be to support the much neglected Ministry of Justice that would improve the legal system and so on. Tell me, Nia, who brings the criminals before the justice? Let me answer. The police force is connected to the Ministry of Interior. Alright, stop your bitching. I'm ready to make a decision. 
What would it be? Literally has to knee lean forward. Uh, yeah, the funds are going to Ministry of Interior. Uh, yeah, so fun, funds will go to the Ministry of Interior to be used to improve the police and local governments. A wise choice. I was expecting it to be different, Mr. President. A brief moment of deliberation passed. Nia got up from her seat. I must return to the Ministry to implement necessary changes. Very well, I see you soon, Nia. I need a few words with Mr. President. Nia smiled and left the room. Lilius turned to me. I have a proposal. We have been battling with terror for a long time now. I want to put an end to it. That's why I'm proposing the formation of a secret state police. This will be a new force that will be in charge of handling and trying to secure the intelligence matters. The primary aim of this program is to detect and prevent subversive elements before they take any harmful action against the state. If you accept, this will give our administration power to handle threats more discreetly as well. Cool beans, dude. Let's, uh, let's form the secret state police. Excellent. I will start the prep work. You're making a good decision after a good decision today, Mr. President. I will be in touch. Lilith got up and left the room. Fantastic. I, I, I still I still like the secret police. I don't know why. Obviously, in reality, that's kind of a messed up thing, but it's just entertaining here for some reason. Alright. Let's see the journal. Just saying that we... Funded the Ministry of Interior and the Secret Police. Country overview here. We've got Secret State Police and increased interior funding as active policies. In our current situations, organized crime contained is an orange thing for some reason. I guess because it's contained and not uh, eliminated. And happy police personnel and subversives arrested as green situations, which makes sense. Sweet. All right, let's check out the news here. Looks like we've got three new papers. So from the Holzor Post, protesters target sacred symbols. Sacred fi figures and symbols of disunity, including Saint Dast himself, have become the targets of vandalism and protests continue across Sordland. What initially began as a protest against the murder of Bernard Circus in January has turned into rioters forcibly tearing down monuments of former Swordish politicians, saints, and other figures. Even if rioters are successful in removing the images of St. Das or Tarkin's soul from parts of society, this will only serve to strengthen our faith and our political will, said Curtin Lust, mayor of one of the worst hit cities, Annika. Cool. Alright, Lock Haven Times. Richter calls president to action. The head of Sordland's main opposition party, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, Friends Richter, said President Rain needs to address issues like term limits and electoral threshold if Sordland's democracy, freedoms, and economy were to be developed. Richter also talked about the need for educational reforms and expressed his support for Minister of Education, Siahar Walda. Cool. Well, we're definitely going to be uh, helping Siahar out. So that's, that's one, one less thing for him to complain about. All right. And the last one here is from The Economist's Economy is Slowly Recovering. The recession has slowed down last month, showing signs of recovery, but make no, no mistake, Sordland is still in a danger zone. The past several weeks have brought lots of mixed news in Sordland, but good news came particularly from several regions hitting pre-recession output numbers, thousands of people are trying to work, and Sordland citizens getting out and spending more. Manufacturers cranked up the assembly lines again, and many businesses welcomed back customers. Sweet. I know we still have quite a ways to go before we recover. If nothing else, because our economy is still in the red. But, details. Alright, let's see here. Um, I'll just go to lock even because the mouse is right, right there. Alright, discussions of changes to the tax system. We were at the top floor of the Business Council building, which had a great view of the beautiful lock haven. I looked outside from the tall glass windows. The Markian Sea stretched as far as the eye could see, and it was dotted with many ships towards the horizon. They're mostly cargo ships, carrying precious goods in and out of Sordland. Tracing back the paths of the ships, I looked at the harbor. Lock Haven was home to one of the largest harbors in the entire continent. Many dockyard workers were loading or unloading the containers. Work never stopped here. The door opened. Simon, Mikhail, and Edith entered the meeting room. Mr. President. Mr. President, it's so nice to see you again. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. President. Yeah, it's great to see you all again. Simon put down his bag on the table and started collecting his documents, while the others slowly took their seats. 
Mr. President, before we start, I'd like to mention some rumors I heard. The Workers' Rights Act did not sit well with many business holders, especially the first section about the minimum wages. I heard the same. This has caused these businesses to lose millions of rent just overnight. Unfortunately, especially during recession. Uh, what's unfortunate, Miss Edith, is that this bill is enacted this late. None of them responded. Simon waited patiently. Once everyone was ready, he adjusted his glasses. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here for their work on our tax system reform. We all know how complicated our current system is. This work wouldn't be possible without you. He turned to me. The ultimate goal here is to end the recession. Before we move ahead and start formulating a plan, we need you to determine our direction, Mr. President. We have a few possibilities as a result of the work we have done so far. We can increase, maintain, or decrease tax for large corporations. I believe some of us in the room have a few strong opinions about this. In parallel, we can increase, maintain, or decrease taxes for small and medium businesses. Let's start with large corporations. We'll move on to small businesses. Alright, what's the outcome if we increase taxes for large corporations? Simply put, if we increase taxes, we have more government budget to spend, which will make them handy. On the other hand, it's not directly helping us revitalize the economy. Our government is already in debt. There's maybe a way to get out of that debt. I do believe that there's one way to get out of the recession. It's through the trade and economic contribution of large corporations. Increasing their taxes will check them on you. I'll go a step further. Increase their taxes will have disastrous results. Making the enemy of them. Trust me, Mr. President. Nobody wants to make an enemy of them. <laughs> it goes both ways, Mr. Robin. Of course. Alright, what if we decrease their taxes? Yeah, it's not an option at this point. Our state is broke. We're barely functioning with help of taxes. Well, what if we balanced it by increasing tax on small businesses? I see. I'm not sure if that's a good idea with the current state of our economy. I think this is a great idea. Uh, me too. You'd have them on your side on top of solving your recession crisis, Mr. President. <laughs> that's going to go with the dick answer again. Uh, they better try to stay on my good side. Uh, Alright, whatever. Anyway, is there any downside to keeping things as they are? I'm of the opinion if we don't make any changes, nothing will change to stop the recession. We need to do something. I think so, too. Agreed. Cool. Well, I'm pretty sure I already know the answer to this question, but what do you all think we should do? I don't think we do anything at this point. Although I would prefer to decrease taxes, it doesn't seem to be the best option. Our international trade is driven mostly by the products of these corporations. They're the backbone of our economy. Exactly. An increase should be out of the question. These companies are the backbone of our economy and are way out of the recession. Cool, y'all are useless, but I'm ready to make my decision anyway. Very well, I'm all yours. Alright, so we are supposed to increase taxes for the larger businesses, which is what I figured. We'll increase taxes for large corporations and balance it, balance it with a decrease for small businesses. Oh, cool, I didn't even get to ask about small businesses. Well, whatever, it's fine. Uh, you're making a mistake. This is going to have outrageous effects down the road. Enough. The president's made his choice. Well, then, I have taken note of our action. I'll put it into implementation as soon as possible. We will be giving some people relief by enacting tax breaks for small and medium businesses, and there will be an increase for large corporation taxes, which will help us sustain our balance. Simon organized a stack of papers he had in front, placed them back into his briefcase. Well, then, thank you, everyone. That will be all for today. Yeah, thank you, Simon. They left the meeting room. I decided to stay a bit longer. I went by the windows again and kept watching the sight uh jeez, the sea in silence for some more time. Sweet. Wow, that this generated a ton of newspapers, but alright. So let's look at our country overview. So for the economy, we've got active policies of tax breaks for small medium businesses, tax increase for large corporations. The red corporate uh, current situation is large corporations are downsizing due to the higher taxes. Which honestly just sounds like they're being uh, sore losers there. But in a green thing, small businesses are growing. Cool. Alright. And a journal is literally just saying that again. Sweet. Alright, we got five newspapers here. So, from the Whole Sword Post uh, Tax cuts for small and medium corporations. In order to end their session, the administration has announced new changes to the tax system. 
As per the information provided by the Ministry of Economy, the new changes include a tax cut of 10%, bringing the total to 25% for small and medium-sized corporations. President Rand has approved the tax form, and the changes are expected to come into effect immediately. Awesome sauce. Alright, Lockhaven, uh, Lockhaven Times. Torn Hill School wins award. National school rankings have announced their results from 1955 school metrics. Surprisingly, in the category of primary and secondary education, it, uh, the Torrin Hill School surpassed all others with the highest average results, uh, achieved in the student performance, discipline, facilities, hygiene, and staff happiness categories. The NSR committee gave an award to the principal. Education experts believe that the principal and the head teachers excelled in taking responsibility for their duties, which led to better performance in many aspects. Upon closer inspection, the Lockhaven Times editorial team found out how much delegation occurred in the staff that even included diligent teenagers to improve and maintain the operations of the school. Sweetness. Alright, from the Radical, Red Youth Calls for Peace. Earlier today, Johann Gossmich, one of the leaders of the Red Youth, spoke to the public and uh, condemned the opportunistic looting and violence taking place in cities across Sordland, saying it is not being done in the name of Bernard Circus. He denied terrorist allegations and condemned the attacks, saying that the Red Youth has no connections to the violence. He accused the police of trying to sway the public opinion against socialism and legal millennialist groups such as the Red Youth. Some people are trying to incite violence to take away the meaning of these pre uh, peaceful protests at Gossmich, warning the protesters about uh, inside people trying to exploit the situation. He also called for peace, saying that the justified and meaningful protests have already lost their course and started benefiting a select group of people. Well, you're probably not wrong with that last point, at least. Alright, from The Economists, large corporation tax increases are uncalled for. Of course they are. According to the information we've received, the administration has decided to increase the taxes for large corporations by 10% to a total of a staggering 45%. This comes as a part of the tax reforms to stop the recession. We have shown our analysis of the current economic situation many times, the result is clear. Large corporations bring in more money into Sordland, and they are the reason the recession is not worse than it already is. And this move only serves to weaken the backbone of our economy. We can't help but question President Rain's real intentions with, the with this decision. And Geopolitico. Smolak threatens new military incursions targeting BFF. Uh, Rockovitz Valen. Basic President Viktor Smolak is threatened that to launch military operations in northern Valen, close to the borders of Sordland and Lesbia, against the Bluetooth rebel group, the BFF which Rockovitz considers to be a terrorist organization. In a television interview, to Curry support for the next month's referendum to extend its presidential powers. Smolik announced that the military is preparing a new internal operation with possible cross-border implications against the BFF. Observers point out that a tough stance against the BFF, which is fighting for minority rights, plays well with basic nationalists. Smolik has pledged to eradicate the Bluish groups in Valen, the Democ uh, yeah, Democracy Party of Valen, and the militant organization Bluish Freedom Front which is known to operate both in Valen and Sordland extensively. Such operations are fraught with military risks and the possibility of further exacerbating already tense relations among neighbors, particularly Sordland, due to the large number of British minority living close to the borders, as well as your cause to back Lesbia. Despite such risks, some uh, analysts don't rule out such a military operation. Awesome. Alright. Looks like the only thing left is to head up here to Lenker for a briefing on H3 Highway construction issues. The H3 Highway construction created a second opportunity to visit the seaside town of Lenkirk, known for its salmon. Thousands of people from the city were employed for construction work by the new highway project. The main purpose of our visit was to solve construction issues that began to endanger the deadline. The mayor welcomed us at his own mansion and took us on a brief tour in the city. Afterwards, we gathered at the city hall. Simon looked a little worried, but Lilies looked dead serious. There is also a message of support from the mayor of Arbury, Eric Neal, who is grateful for the H3 investments. I have concerns about the construction due to, prog uh, due to progress being slower than expected. We scheduled the project to finish in the late 1955, but the Source State Corporation might miss a target with the current trajectory. After engaging with the managers, they have said they are moving forward slowly but steadily, and the cliffside ground lane construction between Lancaster and Arbury is proving more dangerous than expected. The SSC is an organization of principles, so they aren't rushing risking people's lives. The state can't be reckless. Oh, what can we do to uh, increase the construction speed, Simon? Well, that is the million dollar question. There are a couple of issues that need to be resolved if we want the SSC to make the deadline. One of the important issues is the construction management team. The other could be outdated construction methods, which you. Uh, er, jeez. 
The outdated construction methods used, which require more ground power, but we aren't sure if that contributes to the issue. But with that comes other issues. We don't want to create chaos in the management team, which could create further problems. Uh, let's see, this is back in chapter one. I don't remember what I was supposed to do for this one. Cool. All right. I thought this is what the uh, proper answer was, but I had to go find it real quick. So the manager should be fired. This is unacceptable. Yeah, it would be a drastic measure, but not unreasonable. And placing with competent managers would do. I disagree completely. The SSC manager is the most experienced construction manager in Sullivan. If only competent managers could work, new blood could move things back on track. We have a lot of talented construction managers in the private industry who would work for us in the SSC. Simon took a deep breath and continued. One way or another, we have to solve this issue. This can lead to real complications down the line otherwise. We can either give the construction managers more money, warn them, or replace them. With more resources, the manager is more likely to hit the deadline. Any other action just hurts Sullivan. Nah, screw them. If they can't get the job done, uh, they need to go. Replace the construction managers with more competent people to ensure the deadline is hit. Now, it's good to see the failure isn't rewarded and punished. Wait, what? <laughs> Whatever. We'll find more competent people through our networks. Yeah, this is a bad decision. This move hurts the honorable SSC more than anything. will hamper our efforts. Well, that should be it. Good thing we figured out a way to move the process forward. The meeting ended. The three of us went to the beach of Blinkerg. It was rather rocky, but very pristine. The sunset looked absolutely astonishing over the marking sea. The day-long visit ended with a dinner involving the most important peer, uh, people in the city. Many of them were bureaucrats. Later, we made our way back to Holesword. Awesome. Alright. Looks like we got a couple of reports and another story beat. But, honestly, that feels like as good a spot as any to go and call it for today. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.